everyone, this is the Hormone Genius Podcast, and today we're going to be talking about what you didn't know was missing in sex education. This is one of my all-time favorite topics because um, it can be hard to talk about, um, but in my opinion, it's important to talk about. And we can all kind of think back to the moments where we learned and were introduced to this concept of sex education and, um, you know, safe sex and the anatomy and physiology. And what Teresa and I are going to share with you today is how the information that we were shared when we were in school and the information that's being shared now, it's not the full picture. And because it's not the full picture, it is harming um, our young men and women. And so we want to be sure to fill all those gaps, redirect our generation and generations to come on the truth about what sex education should be, because it's much more dignifying than what um, is being presented now. So let's get, yeah, let's get started. And um, I just wanted to talk to you and ask you, Teresa, just from your perspective as a mom of how many kids? Eight. Eight (laughs) children. And how many girls? I have two girls and six boys. Two girls and six boys. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit, how was that for you when the schools shared with you what they would be teaching? Like the school that you take your kids to, do they talk about sex and how do they do that? Yeah. So, I mean, um, the school that my kids went to for grade school, I remember the program that they had was much more like, I mean, it definitely was like a pre-puberty kind of like discussion, but then I did like go through the whole, like what intercourse was. And this was for kids in fifth grade. And I had a real problem with it just because, I mean, I think when you're educated, like we are, Jamie, we, you want the full truth to be given. And to me, sometimes it's like, you're giving these little biological realities without context. And so you have a fifth grader's brain and you're starting to talk about all these kind of moving parts in our biology. And there's nothing in the brain that was there before for context for that. And then it's kind of like, oh, the parents are like, well, they had the talk. So like, they're good now, you know? And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I mean, this conversation should not be a talk that's done in fifth grade. It should be something that's lifelong. And again, it has to have a standing, uh, a starting point and a foundation in natural law, which is that we are made in God's image and we have this gift of fertility. That is what, as men and women, we are called to basically the, the procreative powers that we have. And what we are passionate about particularly is like, if you understand that foundation, there is a connectedness to your body that allows for um, a growth, a maturity, Mm -hmm. an understanding of fertility that, again, doesn't happen when you just kind of do traditional sex education, which is just, this is what sex is. And now we have to tell you that consequences happen when you do this and we want to protect you from the consequences. So it's much more just almost like telling you this thing is bad from the beginning with, because it's all focused around negative consequences. And then what can we do to prevent those negative consequences, which ultimately to me is always setting people up for failure. Cause I mean, you're telling them you're going to do this and now we have to protect you from all these problems from it. Mm -hmm. And that always has never resonated with me well. So yeah. And you know, with my own kids, it's hard. I'm not saying it's not hard. I'd much rather talk to a bunch of, you know, other parents, children (laughs) or other children, not my own. Like, you know, there is an awkwardness about it, but once you at least start those conversations, sometimes it's just, again, the gift, the natural flow of speaking truth from your heart. And, and then, and then you can really get into the nitty gritty. Absolutely. But yeah. Yeah, totally. And I always think about, you know, how, you know, our prefrontal cortex, you know, that's not fully developed until we're in our younger 20s. So the ability to reason and think through just cause and effect, literally, biologically, it's just very challenging um, for everyone until they're in their early 20s. So I like what you said about that, how important it is to have the context. And then also this idea that like, it should not be something where you know, okay, well, I crossed it off the list. We had, they got the talk and now this is not a conversation point anymore. Because again, if we think about the very act that brings forth 
new souls. <laughs> there should be some respect and honor around that. Not like I'm going to check this one off the list. Like I think probably because the, the amount of um, energy put forth towards something, if it's not high, then we don't think that the thing is important as much, you know, but if, if we're giving it attention and we're maybe not, we're, as parents, we're not talking about it all the time because, again, that's uncomfortable sometimes for, for the kids and parents have to kind of pick up what's appropriate and whatnot. But if we truly act like it's a thing you cross off a list, then that seems to be the equivalent, the equivalent of the amount of conviction that person might have or that child might have as that kid grows up. And so we just have a lot to do. You know, we have a lot of work um, ahead of us, but the good news is you know, because we're living in this body of ours, when we're exposed to the truth and when we're empowered by the way our body works, it's exciting. It's not like a bummer. It's very cool. Um, and so again, I'm really excited to be talking about this with you today, yeah. Teresa. Yeah. I mean, the gift of our sexuality is, is, uh, it's really beautiful. And that's, I think, I think we both agree there again, let's take like the negative out of it to some degree. I mean, this is such a natural thing. Um, it's a it's a good thing. It's a sacred thing. And it brings about like new life. It's this connection between love and life that is so profound. And I, so what I, I think about with this is again, we have these comprehensive sex education programs, but yet, you know, statistically that like the Guttenmacher Institute, which is the research arm of Planned Parenthood will tell us that 50% of young people who have an unplanned pregnancy were actually using a contraceptive method in the month that they conceived. So we're giving them all of this information, but yet, again, the risk taking is still happening. They're not using these um, methods effectively. And so we're still ending up with unplanned pregnancies. Um, and part of it thinks for me, I mean, when I'm talking to young people, um, I often think to myself, do they really know how a baby happens? Like, do they really understand when they can get pregnant? Like as a woman, do, do they know that when, you know, they release that egg, they could only get pregnant in this super short amount of time. And I think about if we could just, again, connect people to their fertility and their bodies, there would be a, an eye-opening kind of respect for the body that just doesn't happen when you just tell them, you know, just don't get pregnant or don't get an STD. And this is how you don't get this bad thing. Like let's, let's give them a profound respect for the dignity of sex. And how, how do we do that? You know what, this brings me to a story a friend of mine shared with me. She's the director of a crisis pregnancy center in the town I'm at. And um, she was sharing with me that there was a woman that came in and she was so confused. She's, she was um, 17. Okay. She's 17 years old. This woman's going in through the front doors of the pregnancy center. And she is like, what's happening? I'm living in a twilight zone. I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. And then, you know, they had their counseling session. Well, did you have sex? Yes. You know, I did. And she's like, well, that's, that's what happens. Like if you have sex, you might get pregnant. And this woman's like, but I'm, I'm not 18. I'm, I'm not 18. How, how am I pregnant? I thought a woman could only get pregnant when she was 18. Wow. And then my friend was like, no, no. <laughs> what? Like, <laughs> you know, she went through the school system. How in the world, how in the world did that happen? And then another story too, I'll just share. Yeah. Um, another woman came in pregnant um, and was very confused. And again, I was having tea. I love to drink my tea. I'm drinking my tea and we're drinking, we're having our warm drinks and we're sharing stories. Like, you know, we're friends. <laughs> so anyway, a friend of mine, again, the director of the center, she's like, yeah, she's like this other woman came in, you know, a couple months ago and she was confused that she was pregnant too. I'm like, what's the deal? She's like, well, she thought that like, she didn't like the, you know, effects of the pill. So she's like, Hey, boyfriend, just take, take this, take it. And we won't get pregnant. And of course they got pregnant and he, he thought he would just take the pill for them, for, for them both, you know? So she was so confused. I'm like, wow, this is very interesting. <laughs> and so I, I believe that there are many stories similar to that. Like how in the world is this happening? So I, I agree with you, Teresa, hundred percent. Like yeah. women don't know. They yeah. don't know. 
yet yeah. the the urge is so strong the the urge for sex and the urge for that closeness especially as young women that emotional connection and then of course the physical and the, and the men like it can be it can be so noisy and so yes. if you don't have any other wisdom being thrown to them in some sense what else are they to do you know that's what they're thinking probably but there's a lot that we can do yeah when i and again going back to being a parent i'll never forget my i was in a car and i have said this to you i think you before jamie that seems like my best conversations happen with my sons just when we're driving to school in the car um, because they're forced to be with you they can't run away and sometimes like I don't know, just like really awesome natural conversation seems to happen. But we were talking about something related to sex. And I remember him saying to me, you would be so mad if I had sex before I get married. And I, you know, I was like thinking to myself, I'm like, I'm like, actually, no, I wouldn't be mad. I'm like, I want you to understand that like, again, sex is this beautiful gift. We're all called to give of ourselves. And this beautiful gift is something that I hope you, you know, get to engage in someday in a really healthy, positive way in marriage. But the, the forces are so strong that we know that we're going to mess up sometimes. And I wouldn't be mad because, again, this is something we're all, like our biology calls us to, and that we should see that as, a, as something that's awesome. And if we mess up, we just, we need to just recalibrate. Okay. Was I loving the other person? Was I using the other person? Was I loving the other person? I mean, it often comes down to that. I mean, we, if we ask the question in sexuality, is this something where I am trying to will the good of the other person or am I not? Am I just trying to take something from them? And we know like in our culture, the vast majority of experience of sex are taking from other people, not giving to other people. So having the conversation, you know, with our children that it is a gift and it's to be given in love and respect to another person, you know, that should be the starting point um, of how we talk about these things. And the reason why, you know, again, telling people about birth control and how birth control, like there's, that's not the wrong thing necessarily in the sense that that's education, it's information. But if you don't apply the information to who, who the human person is and what the purpose of the human person is, like it, it makes no sense to, to young people. Like they have to know what is this for? And the reality is, is that, and I say this to my young patients is sex makes babies, sex makes babies, sex makes babies. Like there is the bio, the biological reality that sex makes babies and, and we just need to start there, you know, because if you don't keep saying that you have like what your, your stories are, which is like, uh, I didn't realize sex made babies, you know, like, let's just keep remembering that. And yes, sex is for love and for bonding and all those other things. But the first and foremost reality is the physical aspect of it is that it leads to life. And that's, that's what we all need to kind of start with mm -hmm. and that that power is something that needs to be respected and um we have to like give them the tools to be able to respect it totally. so when we talk about fertility and the awareness of fertility i think um i know i myself and i'm sure you do too jamie we feel that this awareness of fertility connects us to this power in a way that just talking like about sex education does not. And so how, how has that been experienced with you talk? I know you give talks to young people too. And how do you see like their eyes open when you, like you're giving them the power basically. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, one example I'll use that I love to share. Um, so again, you would assume that for college students who are in the health promotion major, specifically women's studies, <laughs> would, be, um, would be taught about their fertility cycle. You would just assume it, you know? Um, and so I, I'll never forget the moment I was asked to come and speak to a women's health class. I had just finished up my research paper um, as a master's student in community health education, and my whole research was on fertility awareness-based methods. I compared five different systems against one another, 
And as I learned all of what I was learning for the first time ever, like I hadn't really known the context, chose it for my research topic, mind was blown. I decided that I would um, interview medical professionals to understand why they don't share this information with their patients. This was my research study. Anyway, I was sharing this information with the college um, girls. And as I was sharing just the, just the basic anatomy and physiology, like this is how your body works, I could see like woman by woman that the eyes would just change, you know, like a teacher who's in front of their math classroom, they're trying to explain a problem on the chalkboard and the students can, can kind of almost communicate with the teacher unknowingly by the, by the way their eyes look, you know? And so that's what was happening as I was educating these young girls about just their body. It's information they had never heard of before. And so what makes me excited um, is that this is, this is information that women crave to know. They don't know to crave it. They don't know, they don't know any, they don't know what they don't know basically. But, but when it is exposed to them, it's very exciting. So exciting that after I was done with my presentation, there was a line of women waiting to ask me questions, you know, like they were just so excited and interested mostly because they hated the birth control pill. So 30% of women um, changed their birth control method five times, 30%, five times, not once, not twice, not three times, whatever, like five times is because they don't like the way it makes them feel. And so that's what got these women like, oh, you're telling me I don't need to take the pill? You're telling me I don't have to like feel goofy like a lunatic? You know what? My headaches can go away? What? And of course, there's development there and formation there with these young girls. Like, well, I can tell you about the dignity of your fertility and the anatomy and physiology of your fertility. But what really is needed is to talk about what sex is, the nature of sex. You know, and that is what I think is missing a ton. Even when you talk about fertility awareness, if, if the nature of sex is not understood, fertility mm -hmm. awareness is kind of misunderstood as well. Right. And so, um, and so, yeah, it was very op eye opening to me when I was able to see that these women, they were, ch they were changing in front of my eyes, you know? And so it was very relieving. It's just information we need to share. Um, what I love yeah. is that like, women who maybe don't subscribe to the same ideology that I do, they're drawn to it. Like those college women in your women's studies class, they're drawn to the same truth because we all carry truth in our hearts about the good nature of our bodies. And they want that truth as well. And they want to live naturally. I mean, they don't want to put synthetic hormones in their body. They don't want to implant devices in their uteruses and in their arms. Women want to live organically and holistically, mm -hmm. um, even more now than ever. Totally. So this information about the truth of our fertility is, I mean, we are ripe for it. Women are ripe for it. Men are ripe for it, which is why in this podcast, that's what we want to talk about so much is that this is the true sex education. Like your connectedness to your fertility is true sex education. And it has been what has been missing in it for many, many years. Totally. And, you know, we think about, okay, respect, respect for women, which is obviously important. And we think about, you know, the future is female. You know, people always talk about, you know, women, 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 which is great because women are wonderful. But in a sense, again, kind of circling back to the importance of men and how they view women and making sure that the, there's that complementarity there. And it's almost like with sex ed, it's like what is happening is the schools likely unknowingly are conditioning women to be objects for pleasure, which is a huge problem. We think this is future episodes, but think about porn and we think about what women feel like they have to measure up to. And then we think about how, well, that's, that's what they're thinking about. And I don't need to think about the consequence of sex because I take care of that part. So now I'm going to think about how I'm going to measure up to this porn culture sort of thing. And it, it unknowingly, that's what's happening in the schools, unfortunately, is when we choose not to have these conversations, it's like we're saying women, just so you know, your objects for pleasure, which is not what women want, but we don't know not to want, we don't know that that's not actually the platter, you know, it's the platter we're given. It's the platter we're taking. It's all we know. So they're teeing up that kind of treatment in a sense. You're, you're going to be an object for pleasure. So cover up your, 
the, conse the consequence of your fertility and let this happen to you. Absolutely not. I think it could be used like, what does respectful relationships look like? You know, women, stand up for yourself. You're not an object. Objects are, are used. And then they're tossed away when the object has served its purpose. You know, if I'm cutting a pizza. I use my pizza cutter and then I put it in the sink. I'm done with what I need it for. That's what we're setting women up for, unfortunately, when we're talking only about birth control so that we can be used. <laughs> Unfortunately, women yeah. don't know that that's not normal. How might we feel when we don't feel that way? It's just so sad. And again, I'm speaking in broad strokes, broad right. strokes for sure. You know, that's not every case at all, but um, it is something I think about and it's something I think it's important to bring to light. Well, let's just give like a, a real life example of how fertility awareness does help women respect themselves and stop you know, I guess thinking of themselves as an object for use is Sister Hannah Klaus, um, OBGYN in the 1990s. She um, started this program called Teen Star. And there's actual, you know, research studies, peer reviewed research studies that she did with a very high risk population in the Bronx of New York City. And she found um, that when she taught the girls how to chart their cycle, when they, she was able to connect them to the reality of their bodies and their fertility, that 50% of them who were already sexually active in relationships drew away from sexual activity as soon as they just started charting. Because, and she really believed that it was this respect mm -hmm. for her, themselves that they developed. Like they didn't know that they weren't supposed to be used Mm -hmm. Um, and they, they found a self-worth in their body by learning how to chart their cycles. So we actually know from research that it does work now. And like you said, is this the answer like to all the world's problems? Like, and, and we're not saying like we have all the answers to unplanned pregnancies, but I think what both of us know is that we do really think that there's an underlying truth in women that is being harmed or ignored and damaged by the fact that we're not giving them this knowledge and empowering them with the knowledge and allowing them to find a deep respect within themselves. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter where you come from, what your socioeconomic status is, what your race is, like all of this is the, we're, we all have the same biological reality. doesn't matter. The truth is there in, in our bodies. And so the connectedness to that is important. And so what we want to see is a revolution of sex education that is a starting point, at least with this information. How do we get people to learn their bodies? And, and all high school girls should know how to chart their cycles. Mm -hmm. They should all know when they're fertile and when they're not fertile. That's just we should just understand that if you're going to understand when your period comes and why you have periods, why wouldn't we understand when you're fertile? Cause that's the whole purpose of a menstrual cycle. Absolutely. And even just that self-awareness that we can give to our, you know, students or to our children and just saying, okay, listen. So my daughter is seven. Okay. Emma, listen. So she's 14. When you cycle, there's going to be a time of the month where guys look extremely attractive to you. And that was given to you by the Lord. Like when you're married someday, that is going to just instigate future generations. I wouldn't say it like that, but you know, in our minds, we know what that's for. So Emma, you may feel that there's an urge in you, you know, that an unexpected urge, a surprising urge, but know that that is normal, but also know that that is when you're ovulating, you're ovulating. And so what I think is important to know here, okay, so end of conversation. I tell, my, I tell my daughter, this urge is normal. You don't need to be ashamed. It's how God made you. But also know that sex is for marriage, and it's because sex equals maybe baby. It means maybe baby. They're connected. It's so what we need to know and what we need to be um, educated on, in a sense, or, or comfortable with, is making sure that we know that that conversation is okay to have and that there's a number of girls who actually the first time they have sex, they get pregnant. And you ask yourself, well, why is that? Well, my theory question mark, my theory is 
Could it be that that urge in them mid cycle was so strong? They have this boyfriend, they want to wait until they're married. They both discussed it, but it just, the urge is so strong. You know, their estrogen is increasing and that rises a libido. And when our estrogen rises, men's testosterone rises. So it's like this chemical dance, <laughs> this chemistry is happening. And so it's a lot harder not to then than any other time of the cycle. So I think the very fact that pregnancies and girls and whatever, like in high school, whenever it, it often is the first time they have intercourse with each other, with their boyfriend or whoever else. So that's something that as parents, we need to know that so that we can be sure to create that self-awareness in that girl. Um, yeah, so I, wanted to make sure I mean, that is something yeah. we never talk about. Right. Again, that just sort of like um, pheromone, like the chemical attraction between human beings that happen in that moment when it's possible for them to make a baby, which is incredible, but powerful. And just think about how if, you know, if we knew that as young people, again, you're talking about sometimes we're shamed by our feelings and we just don't understand why it's all happening, mm -hmm. but that we can actually be proactive then. So let's say, yeah, I mean, you want to wait and you want to say that, but you have this awareness that there are going to be a, a very particular time of the month. that's going to be really difficult mm -hmm. and that you can be proactive at maybe not putting yourself in situations where it's going to make it more difficult. Right. Like there's just so many tools around awareness of body that we can put in place that helps young couples, that helps couples who are married even to use the information to have a healthy marriage, to have a healthy relationship. And again, ultimately it comes down to what am I using this for? Am I using it for the will to will the good of the other person or to take something from them? And, and that's what I really love about the way we're approaching it is, is that it should be about real love. Like real love is that I care about someone so much that I would never want to hurt them. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take something uh, just for my own pleasure from them. Right. So, and, and that's what kids never get taught that as well. It's so true. It's so I true. have a, a 10 or 11 year old girl as well. And we just did an intro to charting kind of class and fertility class. And it was super fun. And again, when kids are younger, you're just giving them the information that's relevant to the context of what they have in their brain. Um, but she learned about ovulation and she learned about cervical mucus. And um, just in this last week, she, uh, she recognized the signs in her body and she was like, mom, I'm ovulating. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's so cool. <laughs> She's like, I saw that stuff. It was super slimy. <laughs> You're like an 11 year old. That's awesome. And then I'm just like, this is so great. Like, this is what you want for them to understand that it's not bad. It's mm -hmm. good. And, and if she would have not known that she probably would have thought, Oh, what is this? And hidden and felt bad about it. Totally. You know? So I was just, super excited. And it was the timing of the class was just perfect for, for her information. But when, again, if all girls could really have that opportunity to learn that, that's what we want. That's totally. our call to action. Like we need more people, not only going to receive the information, we need people teaching the information. There's not enough people out there like as teachers to give this incredible, powerful information to young people. So, so true. So yeah, so call to action. If you're feeling as you're listening to these episodes that your heart is starting to just really tug, you're like, oh my gosh, and it doesn't leave you, that's probably a sign. <laughs> it would still be more. It's probably a sign. If it's not leaving your mind and you're feeling super convicted, please reach out um, to us because we can definitely get you in, on the right path to learning more about how you can teach these systems to others. Also, if you are a mother and your daughter is in that like pre-adolescent, adolescent, about to get your period time, um, the call to action could be just to introduce this concept of charting. Um, again, reach out to us um, if you'd like resources on how to get that started. But even just knowing, you know, when your daughter's going to have her period and that like time before where she might get a little spicy. We talk about that a lot as parents. We think, okay, yep, I know she's going to get her period soon. Ha ha ha. Like she's being spicy and sassy. But then a couple weeks into her cycle, do we as parents think, I know this is where she's really going to start feeling super attracted to her boyfriend or to whatever, because if that's the case, if I kind of know 
I'm going to be like, Hey, family vacation, (laughs) you know, (laughs) you know, like, or just being aware, like the prefrontal cortex, like we said, not developed yet, you know? And so what can we do to invite the guy over and have a bonfire, whatever the case is, we can help protect our children in a way that's not overbearing at all. Yeah. Um, And so that's another just little bit of a call to action here. um, As we wrap up, thank you so much for joining us uh, today on the Hormone Genius podcast. Please share this podcast with your friends and anybody else who you just know needs to hear this message Um, and have a peaceful day.